Am I live? Awesome. Hey, everyone. Talk loud. I'm too loud? No, I talk to, louder. I have to talk loud. So today, uh, I'm different than usual. We're at our farm store instead of in the office doing a live video because we've had so many questions um, about farm stores and, and what we do. So I'm sharing with you what I do. If it works for you, great. Maybe you'll find one or two things that work for you. So the first thing I want to do, though, is show you and point out a couple things that um, our farm store, you might be saying something like, oh, my gosh, the door is pink. <laughs> and yes, it is. That's because we everything we do is with our ideal customer in mind. Every And when you do that, then every decision is so easy to make. You, you have a plan. When you know who your ideal customer is, that one person you want everyone to be like, then uh, it makes decision making easy. So our color palette, our, you know, the decor in the front of the farm store, everything to do with our farm store is geared towards appealing to and being inviting to our ideal customers so that we get more and more of them too, because ultimately we run a business. All right. So shall we go inside? Yeah, tell them to comment. Oh, and if you have a question or if someone wants to comment and tell me you're there and you can hear me and all, that would be great. And also if you have any questions, ask them in the feed. Hayden's manning the camera today and she'll look for your questions and I have a list of questions from you over time that have come into the Facebook group too. So let's go on into the farm store. And uh, this is very exciting because today we're setting up for our fresh turkey pickup party tomorrow. We have uh, tons of people coming between one and three because we start butchering turkeys six tomorrow morning. We're the only place around that I know of anywhere that has fresh pastured turkeys for sale in time for Thanksgiving. So we're just getting set up for that today. Stephanie from Texas is here. Yay, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Let me know if you have questions. So here's our lovely pink door. The other thing I want to point out is I didn't, I mean, it took me six years of being in business till we got to the point where we had this farm store. I started in my garage where people, we had, sorry, there's a truck going by. We had a keypad on the outside of our garage and people knew the code and that worked for about the first 40 to 50 customers and that means every week so 40 people a week in and out of our garage by the time we hit that it was like wow that's too many people and so we switched to a small farm store by our house which is just about a quarter mile away from here all right i'm can you hear me, everyone? <laughs> I hope you can hear me uh, because our freezers make a little noise. So someone asked about a keypad on or giving people the code. Yeah, that works for the first few. You know, like I said, for us, it worked till about 40 people. Then it got out of control. And we switched to a self-serve farm store at our house that was about a quarter the size of this building. And then finally, we were able to work up, make enough money to warrant working up to this. And now we have about 150 customers a week that shop here. We are open five days a week. Somebody asked, what are the ideal times, days, hours to be open? That really depends on you and your farm. You have to figure it out. We sell raw milk, so I have to be open several different times throughout the week. If I only sold meat, I would probably just be open on, say, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and make everyone come on those days and that would work. But since we sell raw milk, I can't sell week old milk. So we are open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, closed Thursdays and Sundays. I started out being seven days a week self-serve and um, that was crazy. Again, we had too many people at our house all the time. So we stopped being open on Sundays. We forced everyone to come Monday through Saturday. So what I did is I just tightened up our times that we were available over the years. But it was fine starting out as a self-serve farm seven years ago, having people come. It, that was a great place for us to start. I have no regrets that I started that way. Uh, so this is our store inside, and I want to say again that all the decor in here is to appeal to our ideal customer. She wants to, and I want our decor in our farm store to have, to be the same wonderful high-end experience that our meat is. The quality of our meat is so high, you can't buy meat like it anywhere. And so the experience has to match that. And I wrote a blog post about that that Hayden will put in the comments later. If uh, We have people come to our farm store that say they used to shop somewhere else 
but it, it was just a warehouse or a garage and it, it didn't match what they envisioned for buying farm fresh food. So um, keep that in mind that the quality of the whole experience of them buying from you should match the quality of the product you are selling. And it does not have to be expensive. So when I decorated this farm store, this carpet, it was a hundred dollars and it was from a friend, a cousin actually, who was, it had been in her house for like 20 years. She didn't want it. And she's like, Oh, for a hundred bucks, you can have it. So it's gorgeous. What's the square footage? Uh, the square footage is 18 by 25 approximately. And it's perfect size for what we do. We sell Let's see, we're at about 25 beef cows, 40 hogs, 700 chickens, and we have two walk-in freezers out in another outbuilding. So 18 by 25 accommodates all the customers that we have to accommodate at one time, and it stores, displays our meat well. So it's, so it's a great size, it works perfectly. Um, anyway, we made it look really beautiful and people come out here and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. I love shopping here and they drive hours to get here. It's so shaky. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> Hayden's holding the video and it's, that's why it's shaking. So sorry, everyone. Glass front freezers over here and the glass front milk fridge were really important. Once we bought these glass front freezers, we sold probably twice as much product almost immediately because people can see what's in there and they would stand there and look through the doors and then buy something. So it's worth it to invest in glass front freezers. This was $3,000, that one was $6,000 to give you an idea of cost. Um, and then we have the white freezers and the white fridge as a little backup. Plus, like I said, we have a walk-in freezer somewhere else. And um, we have a displayed a few items we sell, but we really focus on meat, and I don't plan on taking on any more products. I want our meat and milk and eggs to sell first, and we have a few complementary foods that are fit into the traditional food plan. Um, but otherwise, you know, we really want to focus on turning our meat because it's perishable, of course. All right, I have a few questions from people. I want to make sure. Um, oh. Um, I know that Lori asked about having a farm store where it's self-serve part of the time and then she's there part of the time. I think that's a great idea to have hours like self-serve Monday through Friday and then farmer Lori is <laughs> Hayden shaking the camera probably. Can we set this up actually? Oh, you can try to set it up yeah. or lean against, what if you lean against the door? Or just set it properly okay. there. Okay, sure. Hayden's going to try to set the camera up. Then it won't shake so much. Okay, awesome. Oh, yay, Elizabeth is here. So what was I talking about? Lori, uh, that was a great question you had about you could have your farm store open Monday through Friday, self-serve, and then maybe say Farmer Lori will be at the farm stand Saturdays from 10 till noon or something like that. Then everyone knows that if they want to come back when you're there, uh, they know when you're available to talk to you. And I also want to say that when we finally switched to having a manned farm store or womaned, as the case may be, because all our employees are women, we also probably sold twice as much product as when we just had a self-serve farm store. And that's not because my employees, uh, they don't try to upsell, they don't try to sell, they just talk about, they just engage with the customers. And when they engage with them and they ask like, oh, what are you going to use that roast for? Um, uh, then the customer will, you know, they'll start talking about recipes or something, and then the customer will say, well, you know, while I'm here, I'm going to get a pork roast or some pork chops and sausage and bacon. So we sell way more product having a manned woman store, woman <laughs> having someone in the store selling, helping customers. It also, we have, most people shop at our store for health reasons. They're trying to either heal or preventative or they're ultra athletes and they want to um, improve their performance. So they're really into health and all our employees know how to make bone broth. They know how to cook. They know what all of these products do for your health. So we, we are as much about education in our farm store as we are selling product and people love that. So when you give people a great shopping experience, they, you can't keep them away. 
Um, somebody asked, and if you have questions, please ask while I'm on here because uh, we, we're trying to keep our videos short so more people watch them. And someone asked how to find great employees. That's an interesting question. My first thought is you, thank you, Lara. <laughs> but do you charge less at your store versus farmer's market blind cup? Good question, Laura. I'll, let me answer that right now, and then I'll get back to employees. Um, we charge a dollar per pound extra, when we, so we do a drop. Right now we do a drop four times a year in the city of Portland, and we charge a dollar per pound extra on all of our products. We don't deliver milk because of Oregon law, and we don't take eggs there because they sell out and we want our people who make the truck out here, we want them to be able to buy eggs. That, you know, that's a reward for coming out here. So we don't deliver milk and eggs, but all our meat has a dollar per pound extra charge to cover the cost of delivery and gas and the employee I pay to go do that. And the store is, eight, is 18 by 25 square, 18 by 25. That's the size of our store. And for those of you who are just coming on, here it is. It's so cute. Really, the only thing new I bought for the store was that really awesome chandelier. But everything else is hand-me-down, beautiful $100 carpet. The ta dining table I bought like 25 years ago was in our basement. So um, hopefully that helps you. And then someone asked, how to find great employees? They heard me talking about my employees and how they aren't selling here, you know, they're, but people buy twice as much when they're here because they're so wonderful and they give and all that. You know, a lot of finding great employees starts with personal development. You have to be a really great employer to find great employees. And I say that because in our area, there is a ton of farm help turnover. People will work at a farm for a few months and then quit, and I hear all the stories. And our employees stay here for years and years, and that's because I've had a lot of therapy. To <laughs> I mean, literally, the better person you become, the more developed and, and the more you know, ethical and full of integrity and you become, the better employees you will find. And our employees don't leave. They stay here for years and years, which hiring new employees is difficult, and it's very expensive to train someone, and they make expensive mistakes. So you want them to stay for years. But most farms around here, the employee turnaround is crazy high because, and then I hear all the stories about the farmer. The farmer was this or that. You also have to pay well. We pay way more than um, what most people pay for farm help because I want to keep them, and it's expensive to train a new one. Okay, so Jensen asked, as far as keeping, oh, I can see, I, oh, yeah, let me read it on here. As far as keeping the freezer stock, do you space your livestock slaughter to fill the farm store freezers as needed, or do you store the meat in another freezer and add the product to the farm store freezer? Yeah, so Jensen, we have worked our way up to having two walk-in freezers. They're probably 10 by 12. I mean, we probably have 200 square feet, eight feet high, so even more of, of walk-in freezer space. So I, but when I first started and I didn't have the walk-in freezers, I would have to more carefully make, schedule our butcher dates so that, because I didn't have a lot of extra space. So we were limited on the number of chickens we could slaughter. Now that we have walk-in freezer space, um, we can do hundreds more chickens per year because then have chickens to restock our farm store six months out of the year. But one thing to know is electricity is one of our biggest expenses. I have this farm store. Our electric bill is huge. I have the two walk-in freezers. That electric bill is huge. And then our livestock barn where I milk the cows and I have an extra freezer there um, and all that. That electric bill is huge. So you really have to financially be making good profit before you expand like this. Um, so again, this group is called the Profitable Farmer because we need you to be profitable so you can stay in business. Um, so be careful about, you know, know those things ahead of time that your electricity, once you get the, the free, you buy a freezer and you've got that cost, but then you've got the electricity to keep it going after that. And that can be really high. And there were a couple more questions. Let me see if I can see. We need a walk-in freezer. Maybe you can do a live video. <laughs> Nothing. 
I can, but it's so darn cold in there. You know what? I will video Hayden in the freezer because I make her go in and stock all the meat and it's freezing in there. It's zero. It's not even 32 degrees. It's zero degrees. It's below zero. So we might show you that sometime. Um, oh, so Cindy, can you show a close up of your packaging labeling on eggs, meat, etc.? Eggs, we reuse cartons. You can do that when you sell off the farm. So our eggs, every box is different, you know, it's all from the grocery store. Rarely do we have to go buy cartons. So I don't even label our eggs because they sell out so quickly that I don't worry about it. Here is a, let's see, can you see that? Oh, look, it's backwards on the live video. Isn't that weird? Sirloin tip beef roast. And it has my um, label. This is USDA packaged, so the butcher has to put this label on here. All right, so that's what our roasts look like. They're USDA. When it's custom slaughter, you can't sell those by the piece in a store. All right, so make sure you're following the rules and don't get a uh, cease and desist order. This is our little pricing label we put on ourselves, and I have a uh, scales. Let me show you our scales. Here's our meat scales. Again, you're going to spend thousands of dollars on a scales. We started with a used one first. So we just, you know, we've upgraded over the years. And every time I have an extra thousand dollars from selling a beef cow, I will upgrade our equipment or something. So that's our scales. And it works great. We program it in there and it spits out these cute little labels. Oh, look, it's right when it's um, oh, yeah. pointed that way, then you can see it. So we printed out this label for our chickens right there. And I know you're all going like, well, 32 bucks for a chicken. But remember, we're in Oregon, our land, you know, it's, it's 10 times the cost of land here versus like Polyface Farm, for instance. So our prices have to be higher to reflect that. Uh, okay, any more questions? Um, let me see if I can, oh, whoops, I got my finger over the camera. There's Hayden. Oh. Laura says, do you put a pricing label on because your butcher doesn't do it? it? The butcher does not price your meat. No. Butchers don't price your meat. Um, you have to do that. So, yeah, you need to figure out how you're going to do a label. It can be a handwritten label. When we first started, or when our scales breaks, we handwrite pricing labels. Um, the butcher, the USDA butcher, there's a hand-priced one because uh, something happened. I don't know what. But the, the USDA slaughterhouse has to put a label on there. So you can give them the information, and they will put a label, but it will not have a price on it. You have to price it yourself at home. And then let me show you our checkout system. We have an iPad in the store. And this is in my old, I bought my husband a new iPad last Christmas and I got his old iPad. So again, most things in our store have been repurposed. And here's Hayden. So if someone comes in and we have all these things pre in there. So if you want to buy chicken feet, she's got that cute little, <laughs> whatever, I can't do it. Hayden has these cute little pictures of chickens with a hat. I didn't even know she had that. And so then she just put in there burger, eggs, feet, beef, liver, ferments, and says charge. And then the person could pay with check, cash, or we take cards. And we use Square, um, Karen. Karen at Woodbridge Dairy. We use the Square system. Um, I also want to say we were only checks and cash the first few years. As soon as we started taking debit cards, a lot more product so yes you pay a fee I don't even worry I don't even think about the 3% charge because you're going to pay for something like that and we sell so much more product it's not worth worrying about and How big is your parking area? yeah is that a certain app yes Ashley it's the square yeah we use a square app the square and you can use it on your phone so tomorrow when we have 60 people here picking up their turkeys I, I'll be charging turkeys on my phone, Hayden will be charging them on her phone, and another person will be charging them on the Square. So Square is great, I mean on the iPad. Square is great because you can use it anywhere. I can be at a farmer's market, I can be walking down the street and sell someone, charge them for a pound of hamburger. I've had weird things like that happen where people call me and they're like, can, you just, can I just pay for my milk right now and then pick it up tomorrow? And 
they can, as long as I have my phone, they can do that and it's great. And switching to taking credit cards will make you more money. But again, you have to get to a certain size and a certain income level before you do that. And somebody asked how big the parking area is. Not very big. Why don't we show you? We are open. There's Hayden. And look at, you know, the neat thing about our farm store, too, is it looks over our farm. It looks over our beautiful grass fields. And the people come from the city, and they buy their product, and they come out here, and it's decorated so beautifully. And they see our pastures, and the cows were just, the cows are moved to the canyon because we have 70 acres. You're just looking at a small portion of it. But this is our main parking area. It, it We're open for four hours, and... So we usually have two or three cars here at any given time. That's Hayden's car out there, and a car can park there, and two fit in the driveway. They come in, they shop, they get out. So we don't have a huge area, but it does, it works. It's fine. There's that grassy field right there next to the goats that we've thought about uh, parking cars there, but we just haven't needed to, so therefore I haven't had to bring in the rock. You know, I just haven't had to make the expense of doing it. But... I think the most important thing is identify your ideal customer. These are things we do in our, our course. We go really deep so you know who you're serving. And then that helps you make all the decisions for your farm store. Things are so easy to decide once you know who who the perfect person is that you want to serve. Do you have a bathroom available? Oh, yeah. You want to see our beautiful bathroom. And this is more for the employees. There it is. Woo! <laughs> It's $90 a month, and it's really because, um, well, at our turkey pickup events and our farm tours, someone always has to have the bathroom. So even though it's really only one day a month, we need it, it's still cheaper to pay $90 a month to have it here all the time. And then the employees can run over there because they're here for four hours at a time. All right. Any more questions? Did you see any more questions, Hayden? Nope. My mom uh, is an amazing florist. Yeah, tell her to come in. My mom's an amazing florist, and she wanted a job. And I said, if you just keep the porch looking beautiful, I would love it. And so my mom does all this, isn't it? So, I mean, people come out here, too, and take pictures of all of this. And they'll just come to see the garden. Isn't that amazing? But that's all thanks to my mom. And here's our wonderful employee, Jenny. Jenny, get out and say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> so Jenny is our, um, uh, when do you work? Tuesdays and Fridays. Ooh, isn't Friday. she so cute? She it helps to, to have, uh, to 14 people yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> and it helps to have employees that match your ideal customer too, because they want to come out to your farm store and talk to energetic young ladies because that's what they are and so that's what we have yeah. passionate yeah. about health and jenny has her own healing story and and bone broth story and that helps sell product too if you have someone in your farm store you know like a vegan and you're selling meat that doesn't really work because they don't believe what you believe so make sure your your your, your employees believe in what you do or that won't work all right any other questions do you see any hayden Stephanie says, your store is exactly what I've been picturing. Oh, Stephanie, go for it. I love the pink door. It's so much fun, and it matches our person. Any other? Is that it on questions? Okay. We're not going to do a video next week because it's Thanksgiving, and um, so I'll see you back here in two weeks. But I will see you in the group. We're in the Facebook group every day answering questions. Let me know if you have any more. And... Love you guys. Thanks for being here. And I'm glad this was helpful. Let me know what else you want to see. And we'll see what we can come up with. I know someone said the walk-in freezer. Maybe someday we'll show you that. It's just a big freezer that's below zero. All right. Bye, everyone. A happy Thanksgiving.